Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue artifact ramp deck that's looking to generate some power stone tokens to eventually cast Cityscape Leveler and Portal to Phyrexia. So for being a mono blue deck, our deck actually has access to quite a bit of removal as Portal will make the opponent sacrifice three creatures when it enters, as well as reanimate a creature every turn. Then the Cityscape Leveler can destroy a permanent when it's cast and whenever it attacks, giving a power stone token in return on an 8-8 Trampler. And then another very important card in the deck is the Might Stone and Weak Stone. Despite not having Urza, it's still a great way to help us ramp, making two mana that we can spend to maybe cast artifacts as well as activate abilities. And then when it enters, we can either take out a creature, giving it minus five, minus five, or draw two cards. And we can easily cast a Might Stone on turn four, thanks to the 10 three mana ramp cards that will give us an extra mana for artifacts at least. So that way we can even set up a turn five Cityscape Leveler with Might Stone also helping us ramp. So that's what our deck is capable of. Then taking a look at the lower part of our curve, we've got four copies of Fading Hope to just buy a bit of time against the creature decks in the format. Can also maybe scry one in the process. Then at two mana we've got a counter spell with Make Disappear. Don't have a ton of creatures to sacrifice to it necessarily, but it's still kind of a catch-all counter spell that we can easily keep up. And then a Reckoner Bankbuster also has great synergy with the Might Stone, since we can play it early and then the turn where we play Might Stone, we can still make use of the two mana right away to draw a card and just provides a nice card draw engine in the grindier matchups. And then at 3 mana, as we mentioned, every card helps us generate one more mana to potentially cast a Might Stone ahead of schedule. And because we have so many 3 mana ramp cards, I'm also including another 5 mana artifact, Timeless Lotus, which can also help set up an early Portal to Phyrexia or Cityscape Leveler. So Stern Lesson will help us draw 2 cards and then discard a card at instant speed, creating a Power Stone token in the process. So that way we can also keep up our counter spell at the same time or, or various other activated abilities and instants, makes it harder for the opponent to necessarily necessarily play around, but then end of turn we can maybe still cast a Stern Lesson and then follow it up with a Might Stone. If we play a Celestus, it can make a blue mana to still cast a Fading Hope afterwards. And then Thran Spider, a 2-4 artifact creature with a reach, when it enters gives both players a tapped Power Stone token, so it can be a bit of a double-edged sword in some matchups. And then has a 7 mana activated ability that lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of our library to find an artifact and put it into our hand. And of course most of our deck is artifacts, so this will also help us find our various win conditions. And then at 4 mana, the full set of Urza's Command, quite versatile, can be useful against creature decks by shrinking the opponent's team down to maybe soak up a lot of damage. Then can also make a Power Stone token to help us ramp, can make a tapped Construct token which will also grow with the number of artifacts we control, so it can be a nice finisher in the late game. And then can also scry one and then draw a card, and we get to choose two different modes at once, so it will always replace itself as well as impact the board in some way. And then, of course, we mentioned Timeless Lotus and Mightstone at 5, and then Portal and Leveler are finishers of choice. Then our mana base also has a few goodies, Mishra's Foundry, a creature land, which we can easily play in a monocolored deck, especially when it has artifact synergy. And then Blast Stone can also be very useful, especially against a deck like Monorad, which tends to have a lot of 1 mana permanence that we can destroy right away. Otherwise, we can still take it up, also maybe using cards like Mightstone and the various Power Stones to sink into the Blast Stone's ability, since it counts as an activated ability of course and then a soaring city we can also channel using our power stones potentially to bounce and then 18 beautiful basic islands so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw our hands does need to pick up a third land and ideally a fourth as well but we do have the potential of ramping into might stone setting up portal so we'll try it definitely a bit weak to an aggressive deck opponent on naya Turn to Naturalist, so enchantments. Okay. Show him the Blast Zone to maybe discourage pulling out more permanents. So turn three, Spider versus Stern Lesson. Upside of Stern Lesson is that we don't give the opponent a Power Stone, not that they can necessarily make use of it. Spider just blocks the opponent's creatures, so that's probably preferred.
The naturalist picks up a counter. And then maybe next turn we'll take it out with a might stone. Another naturalist. So blast stone on two could also be effective, but for now play might stone. And stem the bleeding. So our opponent's going wide, making portal a little bit less effective. And a ring of truth is going to deal a lot of extra damage. 7-7. Seven, seven. Do we want a chum block? Well, next turn we could maybe bounce with Soaring City. And then still play turn lesson, assuming we can pick up a blue source. So I would be taking 9. Yeah, I think I'm okay blocking a different creature here. And then the spirit probably has more value for the enchantment deck. And by taking out more creatures, we also make portal more effective. Okay, found a Celestus. So if we turn lesson, and let's say we don't draw land, then I could still play Celestus. But then we would be a little short of uh, channeling Sorting City. But the problem is if I just play Celestus, I wouldn't necessarily have the mana to play a portal next turn. Since we would have uh, 8, so I would need to draw another land in the process. So I think we need to Stern Lesson first. And then can I leave a Foundry untapped? Or do we prefer Blast Zone in case we can set it up for 2? Yeah, I'll leave a Blast Zone untapped. Double Fading Hope, not quite what we were hoping for, but I guess now I can play Soaring City and just cast a Fading Hope. So discard another one. Opponent pumps Naturalists, so now I'm tempted to just bounce it before they get the discount. And then Bankbuster, maybe not quite what I need, I still have Stern Lesson for card draw. Opponent replays Naturalist. And Teachings. So yeah, Blast Zone on 2 would have been effective, but we had to Fading Hope here instead. Possible I was better off just chumping a large Naturalist, taking a Blast Zone, and then next turn having access to Blast Zone on 2. But, uh, of course, we can also use Portal to Fraxia now. So I'll try and take out a creature to make Portal more effective. Cityscape Leveler is not bad either. So if we play Portal, that's our entire turn. Makes me maybe regret not keeping the Fading Hope over maybe Stern Lesson, but uh, yeah, that's fine. Should still keep us alive. Catilda can uh, be enchanted on the Kirin, but we have a Reach creature back to block. And then next turn Portal can get back a creature, maybe the opponent's Naturalist. Alright, time to chump. And then do I prefer Naturalist or my own Spider? Naturalist gaining two could certainly be relevant. How much does a reach matter? I guess if they have another... Catilda, but they would have to mill it first. So, I think I go for a naturalist. And then I can play a leveler, destroying the Kirin, and leaving me with two mana. So, not quite enough to do anything else, unless we want a stern lesson, try and draw into a land. It's a little bit risky if we don't. 
So I think I'm gonna play it safe here. Okay. Another teaching, so if they mill over Catilda, that could be bad. And another one. So your opponent's going wide again. Opponent milling double right of harmony for card draw. Portrait attacks. Could just jump with a naturalist, next turn get it back. Did your opponent mill any other creatures for us to maybe return Kami? Although at that point I think I prefer Spider. Could trade for Leveler, or we can hang on to it so it can attack and destroy more creatures. And then for now just jump with Naturalist. Opponent will get back Kami end of turn because of it. And then I could get Naturalist back once again. Fading Hope's nice. Okay, we have options. Let's say leveler attacks, take out the Kirin. Could also go for the wedding festivity at this point, which may be better. And then take it from there. Since we have a bound spell for the portraits, I'm not too worried about it anymore. Got a long way to go to actually kill the opponent. Now what? Do I play Mightstone to just draw? Or I can Stern Lesson? Although at least Mightstone uses our artifact mana, which is maybe more helpful. Okay. And then I can Stern Lesson. And then still... Maybe Fading Hope or level of Blast Zone. Might want to leave more blue mana untapped in case we find a counter spell we want to play too. So, might have to tap Foundry. Sure. Okay, and then Celestis can go. Right of Harmony to start drawing into Kami. Well, next turn with these transforming, they can draw quite a few cards. Opponent goes all out and exiles Thran Spider. And then right draws again. Pretty cool synergy. Okay, so I could. Just chump portrait and bounce something else, like the Tutu Spirit. Could also bounce portrait and then trade for Kirin. But then they will be able to replay this next turn on maybe a Trampler. How much does that matter? I can still take a Blast Zone to two. That's maybe a reason to uh, not focus too much on the two mana cards. And instead chump bounce a Spirit. And then Foundry I probably don't need. Opponent's got one card left, passes the turn. So this Blast Zone is going to be very important. Ooh, a Leyline Binding. Going after Leveler or Portal. Gets Portal. But now Leveler can destroy Binding to get our Portal back. So that's not too bad. So let's sacrifice a Blast Zone. And then... We can attack. Get Portal back, wipe the opponent's boards, and now we even have an Urza's Command to protect against any go White attack. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and so one lander sadly we cannot keep. This is a bit better. And probably get rid of one stern lesson. Turn 
Turn one Frontliner. By itself, not the most threatening card. So up against Mono White Aggro. Happy to counter the Veteran. And then next turn, Stern Lesson ramps into Might Stone, so that's good. So Foundry makes it very clear that our opponent's on Mono White and not Blue White. Alright, that's a lot of creatures. At least Mightstone can still kill Guardian, even though it can turn indestructible. And I think we need to do some damage control here. As much as I want to draw with Mightstone, since we're light on action in hand. Still have a Foundry that can maybe get in the way of a Frontliner. Opponent's also beating down, okay. So take six. And another foundry is not the worst. Now this only pumps attacking assembly workers, so we can't have a 4-4 on defense. But can now maybe block the frontliner. And then we'll still have Make Disappear up. So block Frontliner and then I think just trade for Foundry. Since that's harder for us to interact with. Could see a Laydown Arms which we can counter. Guardian I'll counter as well. Okay, so that could have been a lot worse for us. But now we're running out of action. Just have a Foundry back. Opponent has a mana sink with a recruitment officer. So, yeah, I'll take the trade. Even though we could see a Wandering Emperor as well here, for all we know. Probably should have tapped my artifacts to activate Foundry, but... Right, another Guardian. Another island off the top. So we can cast whatever card we draw at this stage. Put on to Nurse Frontliner. And now a Brutal Cathar without any creatures to exile just to keep up the pressure. Alright, Urza's Command, that buys me at least a turn. So, problem with letting it go to Knight is that our opponent gets a 3-3. But I want to cast this in the opponent's turn to shrink their team down. And then, I think, scry and draw to try and find one of our curve toppers. As opposed to make a construct, which is just a 3-3 that the opponent's probably going to exile. They could also add counters to the team, but at least now the Brute's no longer a soldier, so it doesn't pick up a counter from Veteran. Alright, so just a one counter here. We'll still take two. And then Fading Hope to bounce Guardian isn't bad, as we'll get to Scry again. And our opponent's tapped out for the turn, so that should mean we survive at least one more turn cycle. And we get to see a couple more cards here. And a Thran Spider is not the worst. Can play it, can I activate it right away? I should be able to, yeah. And we can activate this at instant speed. 
belongs to the brutes for the time being. Lay down arms will gain us some life back, so we're not necessarily dead to an extra point of damage. And we found a portal, so that's pretty good here. Opponent's not gonna run out their soldier into a known portal. But uh, yeah, still happy to play it, play a bank buster. And that can pull us ahead. Back to daytime. We can steal the opponent's Brutal Cathar as well to exile an opposing creature. Although getting back a Thran Spider is also pretty good on this board. So a Brutal Cathar versus, I guess, Spider got exiled. So yeah, Cathar it is. And then step one will draw with Bankbuster. Play Lotus and pass. So we've got all the mana in the world. Just need some finishers. Ooh, Shield of Argive. That's potentially very scary. So now Officer doesn't do a whole lot for me. Guardian seems better. Urza's Command. That's not bad. Although I wouldn't be able to Urza's Command in the opponent's turn. So I should do this now, maybe make a Construct and then draw. And then afterwards we can decide what to do next. So Construct, draw. And a Leveler seems perfect. I think we've stabilized. And our opponent explodes. Awesome, very close game against Mono White. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand leaves a lot to be desired, but um, I think I'm still keeping. At least Spider gives us a blocker against creature decks, and Double Spider does a reasonable job of ramping towards Portal. Opponent Mono Black with a Misery's Shadow. Okay, now Spider sets up Mightstone on turn 4. That's a lot more exciting. And Gix will help them draw. Spider does survive cut down at least, as well as go for the throat. So they may not have an easy way of removing it. And I'll block the 3 3. Bono still gets to draw. They can also make use of the Power Stone with Misery's Shadow, so I'm sort of surprised they didn't pump it. Evolved Sleeper. And another Misery's Shadow. Now that they have two of them, I'm probably better off killing the 3-3. And then we can still draw with Bankbuster as well, thanks to the Mightstone making two mana. Okay, so our hand is shaping up nicely. Would love to just draw another land or two. So now block Shadow. Or do we block Sleeper, which the opponent will have to level up twice? Shadow, they just have to pump twice using the Power Stone as well. But at least it's only temporary. So I think I still block Shadow. But now they'll realize they can actually use the Power Stone. And then they're gonna go for Sleeper, nope. Creatures also get exiled, so that's going to make our portal a bit worse. Okay. So we did not hit a land drop, unfortunately. I can still maybe draw with Bankbuster to try. Or I can play another Spider, and then we can still cast an Urza's Command. And then let's see, 7, 8. Yeah, if we draw land, we could um, play Portal, or I can just make a Power Stone to guarantee it. So this seems like the safest play. The Power Stone will once again help the Misery Shadow. So there is a bit of a drawback. Opponent attacks, I'm happy to block. And then now maybe block Evolved Sleeper. Now of course if it 
turns into a 3-3 death touch. Even if we shrink it down with command, it's still gonna kill Spider. So actually still probably better off blocking Shadow. Especially if our plan is to shrink the opponent's team down with Urza's command. And make a power stone. So if they want to kill Spider, they'll have to pump twice again. And that sets up our portal beautifully. Alright, another sleeper, so we'll get to keep one of them. And yeah, Misery Shadow with all this mana is still quite scary. But a portal to Phyrexia immediately prompts a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Fading hope for early interaction, and then Celestus into Mightstone to kick things off. Opponent on potentially mono red aggro. Although no one drop, which is somewhat surprising. Blast Stone's still going to be useful at maybe clearing a bunch of those. So I'm going to keep it as a surprise for as long as possible. Adversary, I think I'm happy to bounce. Will save us quite a bit of damage over time. And Leveler. Yeah, that may not be a bad thing to keep, since it's something that will eventually stabilize us after we ramp. Next turn, probably go for Foundry. Ooh, Squee. That hits pretty hard. Don't love seeing that. So I might have to draw an Urza's command at some point to shrink the opponent's team down. That can buy us a lot of time. Especially if uh, Mechanized Warfare is involved. Then shrinking a 2-2 into an 0-2 means it doesn't deal any damage. Ancestral Anger on the token. And Squee attacks. So we're down to 10. A Lotus. So let's do some math. If I play a Mightstone, then next turn I'll have... 5 lands plus 3 mana, that's 8, and we can cast Leveler, so I can even take out Squee here, and then next turn still cast a Leveler. That sounds like a plan. Opponent's gonna fire off some burn spells, and with a land they can play Kicked Adversary, which represents 5 damage. So... We're dead to land plus another burn spell. And there's another burn spell, so now we're dead to a land to play a kicked adversary. They're not too far from replaying Squee out of the graveyard. So not loving my chances, there's a land and there's the adversary for 5 mana. Alright, GG's. Yeah, Monorad's a tough matchup. We can stand a chance if we're maybe on the play with Urza's commands, or an early Thran Spider would have been pretty good in this matchup. And a turn short of casting Leveler. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a Keeper. Fading hope to buy a bit of time, and then a stern lesson, hopefully picking up one of our 5 mana artifacts. For now, just play island and pass, bone and blue red. And no play so far. And I guess we'll go for a blast zone, which we can also take up, but I'm more likely to want a stern lesson now. Bone does the same. So could this be... A reanimator strategy, mind breaker, opponent's gonna try Millus, fair enough. Could of course bounce it with Fading Hope. Yeah, I guess we'll bounce it so we don't get milled. And that also exiles the unearthed creature. And then now we have Stern Lesson and Fading Hope available. Fable is a good one, but uh, can bounce the Shaman at least. 
Also have the option of uh, making a power stone with Urza's command and drawing. But it seems better to stern lesson into Fading Hope. And a make disappear should be useful too. So maybe ditch a land. And do we want another make disappear? Don't think so. We're pretty late into the game, so could see it being tricky to actually leverage. And then now we could play Mightstone into Thrain Spider. Or we can keep a bunch of mana untapped. But I don't mind being proactive. And then I should probably leave an island untapped just in case we can represent a uh, spell pierce or something. That resolves. And play spider. Our opponent can probably make use of the power stone, so it's a double-edged sword here. Could see a voltage surge take care of our spider. Yep. Alright, so they cashed in the power stone right away, but we still got to ramp ourselves. And then shields down and make disappear, but next turn we'll have access to a ton of mana to cast a leveler as well. And the opponent also ramping with Mightstone. Surprised they discarded it, so they must have another in hand at least. So that can draw. So leveler destroying Mightstone only denies one mana, so I'm probably better off destroying the card draw engine. So we have enough mana to play leveler and keep up a uh, make disappear, which is probably worth it. Go after Bankbuster, and then next turn maybe take care of the Reflection. Opponent does get to draw on the way out. Got quite a few artifacts in place, so a command making a construct could also be the right move. Battalion? Well, that's convenient. Make disappear, opponent cannot pay for it. That would have been 12 power and toughness otherwise. And now leveler can attack. And we'll just take out reflection. Then I maybe want a main phase turn lesson. And then we can play Celestus and still keep up uh, Blast Zone and Urza's command. Which, yeah, at this point making a construct is pretty effective. But we'll wait and see what the opponent does. What do we want to put our Blast Zone on if we get the chance? Okay, opponent with another Battalion, this one resolves. Opponent attacks, so if I command I could shrink the opponent's team down as well. Although, assuming no additional interaction, if I make a Construct and then next turn fire up double Foundry, they should be pretty dead. So maybe we just uh, draw make a Construct end of turn, take 12. And a portal to Phyrexia is a perfect answer to Battalion here, too. They could still have a Fading Hope, but we have our own. So, yeah, step one, probably just cast Portal, see what the response is. And then I can still fire up a Mishra's Foundry. That they can maybe voltage surge, that's fine. Should have more than enough. Go 
could have also activated the second foundry in response with a floating mana to make an extra artifact to grow the construct, but it's not going to be necessary. Awesome. Alright, so we get to see our blue ramp deck in action, and while it's probably still going to lose to most of the aggro decks in the format, like Monorads and blue White Soldiers, it's got a decent game plan against most of the mid rangey decks out there, as we have a bit of interaction, and then a more powerful late game than most of what mid range decks have to offer, and they tend to have few answers to artifacts as well, so ramping into a Cityscape Leveler and Portal to Phyrexia usually lines up quite nicely. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.